हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम वंस अगेन टू आर वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज फॉर इकोनॉमिक्स फॉर क्लास ट्वेल्थ टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द सेकंड चैप्टर नेशनल इनकम ऑफ द सेकंड बुक ऑफ योर सिलेबस इंट्रोडक्टरी मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द मीनिंग ऑफ नेशनल इनकम लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड सम बेसिक टर्म्स यूज्ड इन दिस चैप्टर अगेन एंड अगेन फर्स्ट अमंग दोज टर्म्स इज प्रोडक्शन what is production generally production is defined as an economic activity which produces material goods and services or production is an activity which increases the value of commodities already produced production adds or creates utility production includes not only creation of material goods but rendering of services also because like physical goods services also satisfy human wants second term used in this chapter again and again is consumption consumption is the process of using up of goods and services for direct satisfaction of individuals or collective human wants the households purchase a large number of goods such as food grains milk ghee soap cloth shoes etc and the services like of doctors teachers banks insurance companies transport etc to satisfy individual wants third term is capital formation or investment besides production and consumption capital formation is the third economic function of this economy what is capital formation basically capital formation is the net addition to the capital stock of an economy during a given period fourth term is final goods all goods which are meant either for consumption by consumers or for investment by firms are called final goods or we can say that goods which do not undergo any further change in the production are called final goods the fifth term is intermediate goods all goods which are used as raw material for further production of other goods or for resale in the same year are known as intermediate goods or we can say that goods which are used during process of production of other goods are called intermediate goods such goods always move from one stage of production to another stage in the manufacturing of final products let us take an example of manufacturing biscuits basket is a final good but flour milk sugar salt etc whatever is used in making biscuits are intermediate goods after intermediate goods the next term used in this chapter is consumption goods or consumer goods goods which are consumed by the ultimate consumers or which meet the immediate needs of consumers directly are called consumption or consumer goods these consumer goods are further classified into durable goods and non durable goods durable as the name suggest these goods are those goods which can be consumed more than once example chair car television clothes etc whereas non durable goods are those goods which can be consumed only once that is which goods has no life example milk coal cigarette etc next is capital goods goods which are bought not for meeting immediate needs of the consumers but for producing other goods are called capital goods example machinery in fact all goods which are produced for use in future for productive processes are called capital goods so students these were some key terms of this chapter now let's start the meaning of national income and before we start this concept we should understand the origin of income that is how the concept of income is generated as we all know that human wants are unlimited and these can be satisfied only through consumption of goods and services for this consumption production of goods and services is necessary so this is the production process of goods and services in which income is generated or we can say production generates income remember production is the combined efforts of four primary inputs also called factors of production land labor
capital and entrepreneur. Let's throw some light on the meaning and functions of these four factors of production. Starting with the land. Land refers to all natural resources which are free gift of nature. Land includes both on the surface and under the surface. Example, soil, river, water, forest, mines, desert, sea, climate, etc. All these form part of land. Land is a passive factor, that is, it is immovable. Its supply in economy is perfectly inelastic, that is, supply of land cannot be changed from the economy's point of view. Land cannot be created, nor it can be destroyed. It alone can produce nothing, because it is a passive factor. Now, the second factor is labor. Human efforts done mentally or physically with the aim of earning income is known as labor. The compensation given to laborers in return for their productive work is known as wages. Labor is an active factor of production. And do you know, land and labor are also known as primary factors of production. Actually, it is labor which in cooperation with land makes production possible. You should remember that labor is an exception to the law of supply. As wages of labor increases and increases, labor wants to supply less hours of production. Not only this, labor has poor bargaining power because it is an economically weaker section of the society. Generally, it is said that employers exploit the labor, but it is not so in the modern age. After land and labor, third factor of production is capital. Students, can you answer whether capital is a part of wealth or wealth is a part of capital? I mean to say, which of the two is a broader concept, wealth or capital? It is capital which is a part of wealth and not vice versa. Means wealth is a wider concept than capital. Wealth includes your buildings, land, assets, bank balance, cash in hand, investments and much more. But capital is only that part of the wealth which you have taken out and invested in your business. Means it is clear that wealth is a broader concept than capital. Capital is a man-made material source of factor of production. All man-made goods which are used for further production of wealth are included in capital. Or we can say that all man-made tools to production which are not consumed for their own sake are termed as capital. It will be right to say that capital is the produced means of production. Examples of capital are machines, tools, buildings, road, bridges, trucks, etc. Logically, capital is derived from land and labor and has therefore been named as stored up labor. Capital formation includes three stages. Firstly, savings, which depends on our income and also on our willingness to save. Second stage in capital formation is to mobilize these savings. And thirdly, investment. Investment means addition to the stock of capital goods, such as buildings, equipments that adds to the future productive capacity of the economy. Now the last. Fourth factor of production is entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a person who organizes the other three factors of production. He coordinates the land, labor and capital in a right and required proportion to use them for production. Actually, entrepreneur is the person who initiates the business, who starts the business, who undertakes the risk and uncertainty involved in the production. This risk may be financial risk or technological risk. His main function is innovation. Now, by using jointly all these four factors of production, land, labor, capital and entrepreneur, whatever is produced, the same gets distributed among them as factor income in the form of rent, wages, interest and profit. Rent to the land, wages to the labor, interest to the capital and profit to the entrepreneur. Basically, the amount of rent, wages and interest is fixed. 
I mean to say that land, labor and capital gets a fixed factor income. After paying all these three factors, whatever is left belongs to entrepreneur in the form of his profits. It shows that the amount of profit keeps on changing. This is how income is first generated in the production process and then distributed among factor owners for rendering productive services. Now this income gives rise to expenditure for purchase of goods and services to satisfy wants. This expenditure in turn further leads to production. In this way there are three phases in circular flow of national income. First is production phase, second is income phase and third is expenditure phase. Means first goods and services are produced. Then income is generated to the four factor owners. Then these factor owners make expenditure out of this income. On this basis, now national income can be defined in three ways as a flow of goods and services produced, national income as a flow of income distributed and national income as a flow of expenditure. Let's explain the national income in these three ways. First, national income from the production point of view. National income is the sum of money value of all the final goods and services produced by normal residents of a country during an accounting year in its domestic territory. From income point of view, national income is the sum of factor incomes earned by normal residents of a country in the form of rent, wages, interest and profit in an accounting year in its domestic territory. National income from expenditure point of view is calculated by adding up final consumption expenditure and final investment expenditure on final goods and services by normal residents of a country in an accounting year. In short, national income is either money value of all the final goods and services produced in the country or it is the sum total of all factor incomes earned or it is the sum total of final expenditure. As we said that national income consists of a collection of different types of goods and different types of services. Since these different goods are measured in different physical units, it is not possible to add them together. We cannot state that national income is so many millions of meters of cloth, so many million liters of milk, so many pairs of shoes etc. Therefore, there is no way except to convert them into a common measure. This common measure is money. For example, if the value of a meter of cloth is rupees 20, that is cloth is 20 rupees per meter and the total cloth produced is 100 meters during an accounting year, then the money value of cloth is rupees 2000, that is selling price 20 rupees per meter into quantity meter produced 100, 20 into 100, 2000. In this way, we can find out the value of other goods and services also. And the total value of all the goods and services produced during one year. Only this gives us a single measure of the final goods and services produced by the country in that year, which is nothing but the value of national income on national product. Students, in the definition of national income, we use the words normal residence and domestic territory of an economy. We will discuss these two terms in our next lecture with much more topics related to national income. So it all was for today. Let's revise what we have done today. We started with the meaning of few terms as production, consumption, final goods, consumer goods, capital goods, intermediate goods etc. Then the meaning of four factors of production with their functions land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. Then we discussed the origin of income which is directly related to the production. I mean to say it is production which generates income in the form of rental income to the land, wages income to the labor, interest income to the capital and profit income to the entrepreneur. 
Then we discussed the definition of national income in three ways. In the form of production, in the form of income and in the form of expenditure. Because our demand and need leads production. Production generates income and this income gives birth to expenditure. These three production, income and expenditure are interrelated. Rest we will do in our next lecture. Till then, thanks. Thank you.